Joining us now is uh, Yos Baruch. He's a rabbi at the Schechter Institutes and also a descendant of a Greek Jewish family. Not even just a descendant, the son of. Very happy to have you and, and thank you for joining us. I could tell even just watching it, it was triggered something very emotional, a story that you could relate to, yes? Yes, because um, when I see Nino, for example, I think of my grandparents and uh, of my father who is a Holocaust survivor and uh, the story of Jews surviving the Holocaust is something very close and very emotional to me. And uh, sometimes it is less told in the Israeli Holocaust narrative, so it's... Well, now we have a, it now because of this, it's being introduced into the, into the schools, which is <clears throat> very profound. Let's talk about the history, because, you know, we know mainly about the expulsion, the Inquisition, and the Sephardim, but the fact of the matter is, is that the Greek Jews came 2,000 years ago and are not even called Sephardim. Please yes. explain. The first testimony of uh, Jewish existence in Greece is from 250 uh, BC. Wow. Uh, they found a, a menorah sign on a stone in, uh, uh, in one of the islands in Delos. And uh, the Greek-speaking Jews uh, existed throughout the Hellenistic area, the Hellenistic space, all around the Hellenic Empire. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not only Greece. Uh, the, uh, the area, the geographical area of Greece today, which Corfu today is part of, mm -hmm. right? It's also Sicily, Egypt, which was also Syria, Turkey. All these areas had Greek-speaking Jews. Very interesting. And, the, and they actually had a name called Romaniot Jews, correct? Exactly. So yeah. they are, so, so they have been there for, for all of these thousands of years. It's so interesting to see the close relationship. And now we kind of see why, because there may even be, you know, ancestral relationships between the Greeks and the Greek Jews. Yes, they are very, uh, and, the, and the Greek Jews always consider themselves Greek. Because in a, for a Greek, the language that you speak defines you. So ah. if your language is Greek, you are Greek. And uh, they consider themselves also Greek and also Jewish. It's like a, a double identity. Very interesting. Also, you told uh, you told me uh, before a little earlier a story about like kind of this this folklore, the story of, uh, of slaves being taken as Jews even to to Greece and things happening. Explain that. Yes, the, there is a tale about three slave ship uh, slave ships Titus sent exactly after he uh, conquered Israel. Uh, he sent them directly to Rome, and some of them crashed. And the tale says that the Jews that fled these uh, sh uh, ships established communities in northern Greece, which is my homeland. Actually. Which is where? Where? What is the community in northern Greece where your family we, comes from? We come from uh, Yanina and Trikala, uh -huh. two cities in uh, the Epirus and Thessaly, which is northeast Greece. Um, Yanina is very close to Corfu. Bec uh, not only physically, uh, but also uh, with the connections. Because Corfu and Yanina both uh, absorbed Sicilian Jews, Sicilian Jews refugees who came to these uh, two spots. That's why uh, in, uh, in Corfu, for example, you have two synagogues. You have one Romagnot and one... Uh, Spanish, more uh, with more uh, Spanish. Like, well, even in Venice, there's a million, you know, not a million, I'm exaggerating, but so many different synagogues. And I, I think a lot of people don't realize is the history, even in Corfu, of, of the Venetian Empire and that there were Greek schools and, and things that are still standing um, today. That was a very interesting time in Greek Jewish history as well. Yes, but and it, not only in Corfu, but also in uh, uh, Crete, for example. Crete was also under Venetian. You see that in the architecture, and uh, that's the history. The history is, is amazing, because Greece was divided between uh, the Ottoman Empire and the Venetian Empire until the Ottoman Empire took over everything. So, and also um, explain a little bit uh, more about in the 1800s, um, there were a lot of Jews in, you were, uh, Jews in Sicily. I mean, this is another thing people don't hear about, that there are a lot of Sicilians that may as well have um, Jewish... Yes. Ancestry. From, from the little I know of, on, on Sicilian history, um, uh, they had the, to deal with the same thing, uh, Spanish Inquisition, uh, that same uh, process, and therefore many of them fled Sicily, but some stayed and um, uh, changed their religion. As Greek Jews, for example, we know that the Greek diaspora in uh, Egypt had about one million uh, Jews uh, 2,000 years ago. One million, they even had a little wow. temple. And this, uh, they all disappeared. We don't know what happened to them. 
probably assimilated. Right. Uh, so this is a, a, a phenomenon that we see many times in Jewish history. It is the Jewish tradition to uh, stay in the land of Israel, but also to live outside of Israel. Right. So the diaspora is a Jewish tradition. Thank you very much. This was such an insightful conversation, and, and please come back. It's, it's, so, it's so great to tell the story of the contribution of the Greek Jews and the, and the heroic people in Greece that took care, to their, took care of their family and friends. Thanks for the Thank opportunity you to be here. Thank you very much.